In a series of videos I'm posting at the moment, I'm attempting to repair and restore this HP 9845B vintage computer. The repair is getting quite interesting. There are some very unusual faults in this machine. And in the next video in that series, I'll start going into them and uh, demonstrating what I'm finding. Um, but this machine is quite complex. In fact, it's very complex and it has two 16-bit multiplexed address and data buses. So it's not an address bus and a data bus, it's um, two address stroke data buses. Uh, there are two 16-bit wide and it multiplexes the information on them so it makes this quite uh, a tricky machine to fault find on. And in the previous video in, this ser in that series I said that um, you can actually use the logic analyzer that I was showing to demultiplex data buses, address buses of that type, but I didn't uh, expand on that. And I've been asked to demonstrate how you can go about doing that. And so rather than just um, point the camera at the logic analyzer with that setup, I thought I'd explain fairly briefly how to go through and set up a logic analyzer to do that. It's not something I normally do, it's not a technique I use that often. I tend to prefer to see all the data that's coming on the bus. It sometimes can be quite informative. Uh, but if you're trying to fault find through a very complex um, series of issues, you might want to do that just to simplify the data that's being captured by the logic analyzer. The analyzer I'm going to be showing in this video is uh, an HP 1680AD. So it's uh, quite an advanced uh, analyzer, but most of the HP analyzers in that kind of series, the standalone logic analyzers, will support demultiplexing of uh, data address buses. So before we get started on how to set up the logic analyzer to demultiplex the signal, I'll point the camera at the logic analyzer and it's currently set up with a more you know, traditional type of data capture configuration. So it's going to capture data in a kind of serial form and uh, that means that the data that we're seeing on the logic analyzer uh, won't um, be as easy to read and I'll explain why that is uh, as we go through this video. So I'll move the camera and explain what we're looking at and um, then we'll go on and look at how to configure the analyzer to demultiplex a complex data bus. So looking at the analyzer, if we go into the setup and see how this is configured, then what we have are the traditional one-to-one um, -one relationship between the uh, pods and the pin inputs of the pods and the signals we want to examine. So on this particular analyzer, I can have up to eight pods, each with 16 inputs. And then of course we also have the clocks. as one clock input for each pod. Um, but what you normally do is just select the inputs you want to use on a particular pod, give it a name. So in this case, this is the combined or multiplex um, address data bus. So I've called it IDA bus, which is what it's called in the HP documentation for this machine. And um, then the other signals we want to look at, we just again select a suitable input on one of the pods, give it a suitable name, and then we can uh, reference those pins by name in the rest of the machine configuration. So for example, on the waveform capture, we can see each of the traces. And then if we go back to setup and we look at the sampling, what we normally do is set up a clock, at least one clock, and we use that as the master clock. And the master clock is what's used uh, to uh, tell the analyzer when to store data in its internal memory. So you can have quite complex clock setups, but in this case, all I'm doing is using the clock on pod one, and it's connected to one of the two clock signals on the HP machine and any time there's a rising or falling edge with the way I have it configured here, the analyzer will store data at that time in its internal memory. And that's the data that we see both in the waveform and in the listing. So what we can do, I'll turn the HP machine on 
I'll press and hold the stop key to hold the HP machine in reset. We'll arm the analyzer, I'll release the reset key and we can see it's captured some data. So starting at sample number zero and from that point onwards we are capturing data. But what you'll notice if you start scrolling through this is that there's a lot of kind of repeated information. And also if we start looking at uh, addresses, for example, so this information here is our bus, uh, what we'll see is that um, if we find something, for example, like an address, which is this value here, 21, and um, if we want to know what the data value is, we have to then try and figure out which of the following steps is the data that was read following the address. Obviously the first instance is the address, and then as we scroll through at some point we'll see the data appearing on the bus as well. Um, but it is of course a bit inconvenient uh, doing that and especially if you're not familiar with looking through what appears to be kind of scrambled data um, it can be a bit tricky to uh, work your way through all this. So what we can do is demultiplex this data bus, uh, data address bus and that's this red trace at the top. So we can see here we've got the address the group number but you have to try to figure out then what's going on so this is the actual data value we're interested in you kind of have to know what you're looking for in order to find that and the advantage in demultiplexing the bus is it will associate data with particular addresses so i'll move the camera down and just explain a bit of the sort of general configuration of the machine and then we'll come back and see how to get the analyzer to demultiplex the bus. So to understand how to go about configuring the analyzer to demultiplex a bus, it's easier to start by explaining what it is we're trying to achieve. So if we look at the bus itself, then in the case of the 9845, the bus will start off by putting the address onto the bus. So we'll start off with the address, and at some point through a memory access cycle that data will change and it will become the data. So essentially there is a, um, a time domain issue with regards to what's on the bus. So there's never an instance when an address and data appear on the bus at the same time. And that's really what we want. We want to have, for example, in the listing we want it to show as an address and then a value that's at that address but that's not what we see of course when we sample sequentially so if we're just sampling clock signals as this um, progresses then we will just get a list of all the entries that exist at the time of the clock edges so the analyzer has of course internal memory so if we assume that what the analyzer is trying to do is to sequentially store data in its internal memory, then what it will do in the configuration we've just looked at is every time there's a clock edge, it will store data in the next available memory slot. And it will do that for all the uh, values we've uh, selected. So for any value that is on a pod that is associated with the master clock, for example, all those data values present on the pins at the time of the clock edge will be saved into the analyzer memory. But that's not what we want when we want to demultiplex um, a bus such as the one on the 9845. So the way this works is we have inside the analyzer there is a data latch or data buffer and what we have to do is configure the analyzer so that this buffer is used to capture data in this case from the address and to do that we need to supply it with a slave clock so the slave clock is used to capture data into the buffer and then sometime later we need to uh, capture data that's actual data but that happens later on in the cycle and in this case 
we want to capture this and we use the master clock so as this um, process starts we get the address bus on the or the address data on the bus that is captured into a buffer inside the analyzer using the slave clock and then sometime later when the master clock edge occurs the what is now data is captured and the master clock also causes the buffer to feed its data into memories so just to recap the slave clock causes data to be clocked into the internal buffer but it does not go into the analyzer memory and then when the master clock occurs sometime later that not only captures the data at the point when the clock edge occurs but it also causes the data that was captured into the buffer by the slave clock to be sent through to the analyzer memory and what we end up with is both the value for the address and the value for the data being put into the memory at the same time it's a bit like they occurred at the same time as far as the analyzer is concerned now of course we need the clocks in order to do this now in the case of the 9845 we have two um, memory access signals that we can use we have STM and then we have SMC and these are both used as part of the memory access cycle so the STM is the start of memory and the signal will go low it will stay low for the duration of the memory access and what we're interested in here is the falling edge of this signal and that's the point at which it will capture the address and latch that into the into the buffer so this is our slave uh, clock we also have the SMC signal and if you recall from the previous video this will drop for a short time go back high and it's the rising edge of this that we were interested in if you want to know why if you go back and look at the previous video in the 9845 series I explain that in some detail there but we're interested here in using this as the master clock so we have STM as the slave to clock the data that's on the bus which is the address at the time into the internal logic analyzer buffer and then when the SMC rising edge occurs we use that as the master clock to then save the data which is now on the bus and also send the data that was captured into the buffer into the logic analyzer memory so all we have to do is configure the logic analyzer to use these two lines for the slave and master clocks and then to set it up to demultiplex a bus so I'll point the camera back at the logic analyzer just bear in mind this is what we're trying to achieve I've already created a configuration that's suitable for demultiplexing the bus on the 9845 so we'll load that now and we'll look at the way it's configured so if we go to setup and the first thing we want to do is look at the bus and signal timing now this is where it starts getting um, it might get a bit confusing but it's fairly straightforward once you've done this a few times let's move this light out of the way and this is also one of the reasons I don't normally use this or another reason that it eats up one of the pods and you don't get additional data so the first thing you do is you come to the um, the pod that you want to use you, you've got to do them in pairs so it's either pod 1 and pod 2 or pod 3 and pod 4 that sort of thing so you select pod 1 and in pod 1 in the options you select demultiplex where you do that depends on which particular analyzer you're using but the main thing is select in this case pod 1 choose the demultiplex option and what will happen is you'll then get a second pod 1 this is actually pod 2 it's just called pod 1 here because it makes it easier to understand and also notice now we have a slave clock assigned to the first pod this is the physical 
pod 1 and then we have the master clock assigned to the second pod and it's important you get the order of the master and slave clocks right otherwise this won't work so you can see what I've done here is select the actual pod 1 the first pod as our address bus so I called it address and then the second pod which is pod 2 the pod 2 is not connected to anything it's just left unplugged apart from the clock um, that is uh, selected so you select all the bits that you want and in this case I've called it data and then you jump you can see we've gone from 1 and 1 again to pod 3 because the first two are actually pods 1 and 2 so pod 3 is now the one you use for the next signals and so forth you just then start uh, counting up the way that you would uh, normally so it's only the the multiplex pods that are different so once you've got this sorted out the next thing you have to do is set up the clocks and incidentally with this particular machine notice that I've inverted the two buses uh, and also the BSC bus as well but the address and data bus are active low buses so I've inverted them as you can see here and if we now go to sampling we get to the clocks and when we select the clock mode again we select master slave demultiplex and that again is available in most of the standalone analyzers from HP when you go to the clock configuration and what we're doing here is our master clock needs to be the second pod so it's called clock 2 here it's the clock on pod 2 which if you recall is the second of these two pods as I said it says pod 1 here it's a bit confusing it's just the way HP do this but uh, this is actually pod 2 and it's important as I say to get this the right way around so our master clock is pod 2 and our slave clock is the clock on pod 1 and what we then do is we connect them to the STM lines for the slave clock and the uh, SMC line for the master clock and once again we need to make sure we get the polarities correct so for capturing the data on the master clock we need to use the rising edge if we go back to this notice that's the data and if you recall we need to capture the data on the bus that's the actual data not the address on the rising edge of SMC and the clock on pod 2 is connected to SMC and so we want to use the rising edge but we want to use the falling edge on STM and again if you want to know why if you go and look at the previous video in the 9845 series and I explain that in a bit of detail there you can have further qualifiers if you want this configuration will result in some extra um, entries being captured because of the way the 9845 uses its uh, combined bus but if you want to you can even eliminate those by putting further qualifiers in and you can even have advanced clocking where you can select quite complex uh, qualifiers for the clocks and that just means that it will only capture the data when all the conditions that you specify are met and that means you can effectively filter out things you're not interested in okay so that's this now configured this will now work as a um, a demultiplexing logic analyzer just bear in mind that we do need to change the physical connections we need to swap over um, pods 2 and 3 so we need to move the connections that were on pod 2 to pod 3 and we need to leave pod 2 disconnected apart from its clock we can now come through to here and this will make more sense if I select the listing I'll turn the 9845 on so that's now running I'll press and hold the reset key on the 9845 will arm the analyzer I'll release the reset key and it should now capture some data and you can see it has indeed captured some data so I've color coded these the same way I use them on the waveform so this is the same data we're seeing on the waveform the only difference now is it's effectively filtering out just the information that we want so if we go back and look at the listing 
So if you recall, it jumps to address 20 when we reset, and that's what you can see here. The first address is the value of 20, that's the red column, and the data there is zero, so it's looking for the, uh, the diagnostic ROM, and it's not fitted, so it then jumps through to address 200, which is the start of the uh, boot up code in block five. And you can see over here, we've got block five, and if we look at the code, notice that the first address we should see at address 200 is 7118. So instead of having to scroll through reams and reams of information, if we go down to that line, notice that we're getting address 200, and the data value there is 7118. So even though they occurred at different times, it's been shown on a single line in the analyzer now because of the way we've configured the analyzer to demultiplex the signal. And if we look down the listing further, notice that the address at address 201 is 23. And if we look on the analyzer, the next entry down, address 201, is indeed 23. If you saw the video on the 9845 that I posted recently, then you'll know that this uh, boot up takes about 4 milliseconds. And in theory, on the LPU, which is what we're now looking at, um, this uh, code should branch. So if we now start scrolling down through the code, you can see the time here. And if we scroll down, we're at one milliseconds, two, three, and it was around 4.3 milliseconds that the, um, the delay that's built in at the startup expired. You can also see we're at address 209, which is the address where the code just loops round and round waiting for the um, delay to expire, just waiting for the count in the um, A register to reach zero. So we're now at this point, so we're at uh, 209 and notice the value there is 7440, which is exactly what we're seeing on the analyzer. And what should happen at the end of the delay, it should go to 20A and that should show us a value of 2DC7. So if we keep scrolling down, so we've got to the end of the delay, and at 20A, we're getting 29C7, which is exactly the value we should see. And then it will branch to the um, appropriate address, which is address 200 in bank three. So if we carry on scrolling down, notice that at this point, we are jumping to address 200 in block three. And if we get the code for the LPU, which is different of course, different ROM, notice the address 200 should be 21, and that's exactly what we're seeing. So in other words, the analyzer is successfully demultiplexing the signal on the data bus, so even though these values are present on the data bus, data address bus, at different times, um, if the analyzer is now showing them as if they happened at the same time, which is what we want the demultiplexing to do. And we see the same thing in the waveform as well. It does the same thing uh, once it's configured this way. Now, one last thing I'll point out um, that's quite a useful shortcut technique when using a logic analyzer like this. Notice these little symbols above the, um, the pins, or the pin designators. And if we go to the first pod, you can see there's an up and down arrow at uh, the top of each one. And that's showing that there is activity going high and low on, in this case, all of the pins. If we go across to a different pod, notice some are high, some are low, and some are toggling. But one thing that's quite useful, if you know what the state should be of any bus or pins on a machine when you put it into reset or a particular state, it can be a very quick way of finding faults on a machine. And this machine actually has a fault which I'll demonstrate now. If I press and hold the stop key, which will put the uh, 9845 into reset, if you keep an eye on these little red markers, notice they've all gone high, apart from one. And that one should be high as well. It does toggle when I release it, but there's obviously something not quite right with that particular line, so it's something we need to investigate. Okay, so that's it for this video. Hopefully that all made sense. As I say, it's quite easy to configure. It's just making sure you select appropriate clocks, appropriate clock edges, 
and you put the logic analyzer into the correct state. 